how would you define the sound of in a theater room circa 2024 it's uh it's it's slow it's heavy it's uh dark you know that kind of thing um i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's like uh you know too complicated but uh i think it's very i think there are some catchy bits there that uh you know can be rather engaging so uh yeah i mean i don't know if there's any comparison to the old stuff but uh i think it's uh good a good thing that we've got uh, going right now how would you see uh, how do you see the evolution from the walls of sorrow you know sonically i guess you know walls is more uh more doom and roll than uh how we're approaching it with all the gothic elements and uh you know symphonic sort of arrangements so that's uh a little bit different than at least walls was uh as a concept Walls of Sorrow, musically saying it's like more raw music, is a doom much more death influences than than now, you know. So it's like more raw music, more visceral music. And now we are having, we are changing a lot. We, we passed through a middle time when we got the great unknown with the Anna in the vocals before me. And it was like a middle step to what we have now it was a, a, a middle step on the change so now we changed a lot the sound but keep kept i guess we kept the essence of what a timo always wanted to do with the band that is like representing feelings and uh, contradictions and uh, all the storm all the all the problems all the the this like deep vibes that sometimes everybody at least once in the life has so like i guess uh sounding it's sounding much more like um symphonic much more with classical elements a little bit of gothic in it and also the i, I don't know i it really reminds me a lot like the 90s uh tristania for example and um uh, a night like the uh what was the first album of them i forgot but it's like it reminds me a lot our sound like that and, and other bands but like i guess we're doing some some something kind of new because it's not exactly the same we have we have a lot of the doom but we have a lot of the other parts to mix it together that not much of the other doom bands that i know do it so it's it's kind of different and it's i'm loving it what we are having now maybe both of you could uh, talk a bit about your experience with infirmum and uh, how you kind of joined the band and what what has your experience been for me i uh found the ad i think anna or timo had posted on uh music Oiden, uh which is like uh you know class feds website in finland for uh musicians mostly uh i think it's also some sort of forum board or something like that uh but uh i i responded to that ad and uh they got back to me i had done some earlier stuff uh that was on record with a band in lofty uh so my vocals were there uh, i had some other uh personal projects that I produced myself. So I had some more like, uh, material to give, you know, as reference for what I was able to bring to the band and, uh, they liked it enough. So I recorded a, uh, like demo of the first song that we had released, uh, which was mask. Uh, and they liked it enough. So I just recorded that again, in some way and you know the rest is history as they like to say and uh you know i was with the band uh from that point on i think we then recorded uh the great unknown music video and what a experience that was that was when i met everybody for the first time and oh my gosh that the forest that we were in while it looked cool it was infested with bugs like And I don't like bugs. I really don't like bugs, man. Like 
there were there were ticks there were mosquitoes there were flies the flies were ridiculous i just i i could barely focus on filming that video just from like just being eaten alive and they bugs love me man i don't i don't get it they just really enjoy my my blood and all that so that was that was uh that was an experience for sure but you know it was cool i'm glad that we did that uh it was uh well done so i i really appreciated that experience it's basically i guess the same maybe uh we met in the music wedding also and i was i came from brazil like um i was working full time with music there i had a nightwish cover band for 17 years in brazil and uh, i worked with that and also with music in bars with duos singing weddings and stuff like that, like classical singing. And then when I came to Finland, I really wanted to keep going with that because I had my uh, university there that was like a music production and I was doing my own stuff too. So I, I didn't want to stop working with what I wanted. So I started to search for how to do it. And then one friend of mine that is a musician, he said, oh, that that's this forum you could check. And I, I checked it there. And I saw that was this informal band and uh, they weren't exactly posting for a uh, vocalist at the moment that I saw them. I didn't see anything like that. But then I clicked in the music video and the music and it's like, it was like, oh, this is my stuff. This is very me. So I, I just tried like to send a message and say, hey, are you for any instance like a... <laughs> wanting a vocalist or something like that. And then Timo said, yeah, actually we are searching for a vocalist. And uh, then I sent my my stuff. He liked it a lot. And he said, he asked if I could like record Mask, the same music. Then I recorded and it was very nice. Uh, everybody liked it. We got together, me and Timo personally, before we really wrapped up everything. And uh, we did it. And now we are together, everybody. And uh, I guess it was very lucky from all the sides because everybody works so good together. It's so hard to get this. So, yeah, that's my part. <laughs> to the From the Depths I Cried album, then uh, maybe both of you could like pick one uh, standout track or maybe a song that's important to you from the album and talk a bit about the song and its uh, background. I can go with like uh the pack the like the first the uh the first song so uh the recording process cuz I like I like to uh kind of think of this song as also my it's also my debut uh album for my bass recordings uh you know in a uh you know release like a professional release kind of way so uh when we were recording the pact I I showed up to the uh studio in uh Ertoniemi and um I didn't know the song like I really really didn't like know uh how it went like what Timo wanted me to do exactly cuz that song was kind of a difficult one to record uh at home the I don't know how public knowledge this is, but Timo, when he sends demos over, they're not exactly high fidelity. Like they're not, it's not, it doesn't sound anything like it does on the album. Uh, they're kind of just like a guitar track. And then it's like, okay, do something. I'm like, all right, cool, cool. And and sometimes it works really well. You know, I'm usually the first, first or second one to do like add my own part or do something uh constructed with just because i've had the most time uh during the whole like demo process of these songs so uh but with that one i don't remember i don't remember what the demo name of that song was called but whatever it was i just couldn't figure out what to do with it uh so we showed up on like deadline recording day to record every single track instrumentally um so i was just i was following it following along with demo uh and i'm left-handed and he's right-handed so i could just sit across from him and you know mirror exactly what he was doing so uh the first uh like maybe 
three or four minutes of that song is just me following uh, what he was doing because, you know, bass, guitar, you know, it's not exactly the most uh, technical of instruments in Doom all the time. So uh, we get to the last, I think, refrain from my vocals and we're like, okay, so what do we put in here? So there's like a little bit of a bass uh, line that goes along with the cellos and all that. Uh, And that was just like, that was just a tricky bit to like uh, get down. And it's so simple. It's such a simple line. It's not exactly... Uh, you know, a master master class in bass technicianship or anything like that. But you know, I I just remember uh, it very clearly. You know, writing that uh, melody and just trying to get it down. So uh, another one, just for uh, you know, a similar reason would be burn, in the sense that uh, I need to be able to play and sing these songs at the same time so the bass line for burn is really just like one super impactful note and i'm really i'm really happy with how it came out uh the way that it was mixed it was perfect because like the bass is just massive on burn at the very beginning uh it's just you know i'm singing the song and it's just you know that sounds great you know i love it so uh i'm not uh i'm not upset with how simple it was on my end but uh it just managed to turn out really well uh as uh you know how it sounds in the songs so i'm i'm happy with the the way that it came out and uh you know not too shabby for me self-taught bass player of you know way too long uh, I try. I tried my my best to be a solo shredding guitarist, and that just wasn't happening. But uh, I'm I'm happy with the way that the bass came out, and I think I it's gonna be just 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 fine live. So you know, if we once we get that far in in general, all that. <laughs> the music that was, I mean, all the musics are important to me because I wrote the lyrics of most of them and some of them I shared the lyrics with Elio because he already had wrote some of his parts in the music. But uh, the uh, the thing that the, the hard part on all of this is that when Elio wrote his parts and there was my part missing, I had to create a story that could interlace everything together and uh, at the same time represent what we wanted for that music. So I think that uh, uh, Deception is some music that is very, very deep for me. And I guess it had also for Eliel very deep uh, meaning because the lyrics were for him when he told me what were very important in for, for some experience that he had before in his life. And also for me, so it was a coincidence that we created a um a more like complex story about that in the end it reunites both of our feelings on it so it's like um it's about it's about uh, how do how we overcome all these deceptions and all this uh bad stuff that happens with us in all a lot of spheres in life like in the love sphere, in the friendship or family, all this deceptions. When you are really thinking that you have something and you you don't, or we're really thinking that something is is like that, but you don't. You're just climbing a stair and then someone just put the step in front of you and you fall from so so high place. So this music is very important to me and also Ikamiabas because it's the last one of the album. It's the only disconnected music from the rest of the others because I wanted to do uh, an ode, an homage for my country, uh, picturing a tale, a legend from uh, 
Ikamiaba's tribe that was like a female tribe in the north of Brazil. So it was my homage to my country and it's very important to me to show my love to them. This album took several years to finish, so that's a bit of an extended uh, time to work on music. And also, uh, you are a seven-piece band, so what kind of experience was making this album and what were the biggest challenges for you? So, yeah, it took how long it took to make the album, but I would say like the demos were not um taking that long like the demo we had some pretty solid demos uh ready like pretty soon after um what was it fearless part two i think during the production of fearless part two we had already had like maybe three or four demos like pretty out there not out there but like you know within our own group they were pretty well well made it's just that um you know we 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 lost a member you know anna left and then i think we had to reshuffle some things because we had like a bassist but he also left no yeah bassist he also left so then i had to kind of pick it up um so yeah i mean it took some time but uh seven of us like doing this it's not as big a challenge when it comes to writing the music in fact i would think it's a little bit easier because i've been in bands where it's like one guy is composing you know most of everything and it just leads to there being one really stressed out dude and then like everyone else is just like yeah okay but you know with us uh it's like you know we send these files around to each other we record our stuff at home and then there you go you know it's the song um it's not like a complicated process or anything like that the only complications arise with logistics and rehearsing and uh you know getting together for photo shoots and you know eventual gigs and whatever um it's hard to pull everyone together because everyone's schedule is their schedule and they do their own thing and uh that can just you know be somewhat of an issue but other than that like making the music is really kind of smooth uh the idea especially for me i don't know how it is for everyone else because i'm not everybody else but uh me and timo like can really just kind of pump these songs kind of out like i i get i listen to an instrumental and i can just get the melody you know of the vocals like kind of immediately uh unless it's a really like like tricky song that has some weird weird time signatures or it's like really slow or just strange structure in general uh it's not so hard for me to figure out what i want to do with it um so like so being said you know the my lyrics were done for the most part uh for just about all the songs except for the last one uh and you know that's just because like i figure out what i want to say and then it's there you know i just record it i record it at home and there you go it's on the track and it's not like anyone else is gonna say like hey man i think you could uh do this so much better Uh, like are you the vocalist no i don't think so so <laughs> not that I wouldn't take any con- any criticism, you know, but well or anything like that. It's like, hey, if you want me to do that, it's your band too. Let's do it. But, you know, no one said anything uh, so far. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that uh, it's gone pretty smoothly. Uh, and uh, we get we get the tracks done. You know, I think I think I look forward to writing the next whatever we write, you know, EP, album, single, whatever, I I think it's going to be a fun time, just how it was the last time. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good experience, I'd say. For me, too, it was, like, um, very nice. I never have been working like that, like, with uh, the male part kind of done, and I had to create the storyline and 
<laughs> intertwine everything together. But, um, and also the melody of the vocals, uh, the melodic part I had to create, and uh, also the uh, arrangements for the backing vocals and chore and stuff like that. But it was so cool. It was a different way to compose. And uh, it was very nice. I really liked it. And uh, me and Elia, we had like uh, kind of uh, 24 hours uh, intensive production, <laughs> both of us here in my home studio, uh, writing and uh, together and reviewing our stuff and making sure that everything was like representing what we wanted and uh, well, well done and co-ways and, and concise, you know? So it's like... Um, it was very nice, and we recorded uh, the vocals here too. Um, it was very cool. So I, I really like it. I just think that in the next time for our our next recordings, we should like uh, start from the beginning together, so it will be <laughs> easier. Because I wasn't here uh, when the the part of the lyrics were done, so it was hard for me to figure out. Uh, we had to talk a lot about it for me to figure out what what he was thinking. So. Uh, that that was the only thing, but uh, regarding the the seven band piece, I guess it's a very nice way to 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 compose the way that we are doing now. Like that, everybody has a piece of their minds on it. So like everybody is very engaged to put their their own musicality on it. The cello, the piano, everybody puts his own mind on it. And uh, I, I used to think and to say that Infirmo is. Uh, it's like a big white canvas and we are all one painter. So we are just like mixing different colors and the end result is just a very beautiful, beautiful painting with everybody together. So it's like huh. the harmony of every, every work, of the work that we do together is special. It's very good. The album is out, but what is the very next thing for... In Firmum. We are waiting for the video for Deception. We will have another video from the Draconian, the, the uh, uh, Dronicon, I'm sorry, Dronicon, the same studio that made a burn video. So we were doing the Deception with them. It's a different video, different format, but it's still not out, uh, And but it soon will be out. So this is the right next stuff that we are about to see from the band. And uh, after that, we are just planning more about the about the live stuff. We are just focusing on planning that for the future, the fast as we can, soon as we got something that really, really get along with us, maybe a good management for the booking stuff. Let's see. Mm -hmm. 